Grab your Bibles quickly. Psalms 100. Psalms 100. Psalms 100. We are just going to read verse 1 and verse 2. Are you ready? One, two, three. Uh, let's read together. One, two, three. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Can we all read it in confidence? Verse one and two. One, two, three. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. One more time. One, two, three. Make, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Put your right hand on your head. Say, Father, give me the spirit of revelation. Father, give me the spirit of revelation. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Sit, sit. You may sit in heavenly places. Tell your neighbor you may sit, but don't sit on your mouth. You may sit, but don't sit on your mouth. Say, neighbor, you may sit, but don't sit on your mouth. Neighbor, you may sit, but don't sit on your mouth. Now, hear me by the Spirit of God. I'm going to teach you something. Bada boom, bang, 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 and bang, and we'll finish, and Papa will prophesy. Ay, 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 ay. God, oh, God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Power. <laughs> now, even, even the people outside are ready for prophecy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prophesy. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, I'm going to teach you something that I believe is going to benefit you in understanding of dealing with God. Dealing with God is not the same. Every person of God you deal with, you deal differently. Are you listening to me? God the Father engages with sacrifice. That is his love language. Mm, I'm trying to speak to somebody. Whenever you read in scripture and you see God the Father manifested, his love language was always sacrifice. This is why in order for us to appease God, we could not. That God had to sacrifice his own son unto himself. So that wrath may pass over us. This is why Cornelius, a man who was seeking God, he gave to God, he gave to God, he fasted, he prayed, gave to God. And one day an angel appeared to him and told him, Cornelius, your arms and prayers have risen for a memorial before God. Because whenever somebody becomes sacrificial, you are attracting the presence of the Father. Because the language of God the Father is sacrifice. Amen. Are you listening to me? Now, when you go to God the Son, the Lord Jesus, for him is submission to the purpose of the Father, meaning you have to become a living sacrifice in order to follow Jesus. That is why the Lord Jesus said, carry your cross and follow me. It means you have to live a sacrificial life. The Father wants sacrifice. Jesus wants you to be a sacrifice that is alive. Is this making sense? Yes. So Jesus is looking for living sacrifices. Amen. People who will say, I must be about my father's what? Business. Business. This is why the Lord Jesus said this. Those who love me, keep my word. But if you read in Genesis... When God told Abraham, give me your son. When Abraham was about to sacrifice his son, the angel of the Lord said, now I know you love me. 
So God the Father knows your love if you don't spare what you love. Amen. God the Son knows you love him. If you are living sacrifice, you will do what he says. Because anything God asks you to do is a sacrificial living. This is not just in your giving, but it is in your lifestyle. Yeah. Then I attract the presence of the Lord Jesus. That's why it says, those who love me, keep my word. What I say is, it matters to them. When he moves you, you are in the middle of the night. You feel like praying. Is Jesus telling you pray? If you don't pray, he knows you don't listen to him. Amen. That is why I said, my sheep hear my voice. Amen. I know them and they follow me. This voice of a stranger, they don't pay attention to. Is this making sense so far? But the church has missed it when it comes to understanding the love language of the Holy Spirit. Mm. The Holy Spirit also has a language that is attracted to. Because every person of God you engage differently. Is, are you here or you are... Are you sure you're here? Yeah. So, the question is, everyone thinks worship moves the Holy Spirit. No, it doesn't. Let me show you an example. Adam and Eve were sinless within the garden. But you never see an encounter with the Holy Spirit in the garden. You hear God was there, would come visit them. But you don't hear of the Holy Spirit being with them. But when you open the Bible, you hear the first thing. And the Spirit of God is hovering over the water. After that, no mention. Satan. Uh, What is the language or the love language of the Holy Spirit? You see, anyone that engages with the Spirit of God becomes supernatural. Because the Bible says this, it is not by strength or by might, but it is by my Spirit. When God wants to anoint you, Jesus said it like this. The spirit of the Lord is upon me and he had anointed me. The father doesn't anoint you. It's the Holy Spirit that anoints you. I'm talking to the wrong people. I'm so trying good. to find somebody I can talk good. to. That is why we call it the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Because the one who anoints you is the Holy Spirit. So there are people who... Once in a while, they bump into the Spirit of God, but they have not understood how to romance the Spirit of God. Because if you understand, you will understand that the Holy Spirit is a person, the Son is a person, and the Father is a person, and all three are one. It is one being. Manifesting differently in three persons. Is this making sense? Prayer is good. Very important. But prayer is conversation with the Father, not with the Holy Spirit. Come on. Because when you engage with the Father through the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit becomes present. But how do you engage with the Holy Spirit? What is the language that makes the Holy Spirit move in a place. Whenever God wanted to make somebody special, the Holy Spirit came upon them. Samson was not a muscular guy. You know, people have every Samson movie you have seen, they make Samson tall, big, buff, strong. 
nowhere is he was a Jewish guy. He was not big. <laughs> Nothing about Samson was big. He was a small guy. That is why it was supernatural for him to be that strong. They could not understand it. If he was tall like Goliath, they would have said that he is strong like Goliath. That is why he's strong. So for them, it confused them because how is this small person able to kill a lion and to kill a young lion, meaning this lion is not old, he's in his prime, broke his jaw. How is this guy that is a regular guy, he can destroy a thousand Philistines with a jawbone of a donkey. They have spears, they have crossbows, they have arrows, they have swords, they have shields. How did he kill them with one weapon? That is not even a weapon. It is not natural. Something supernatural is happening. The Bible says he gathered foxes. I don't know how many foxes. He grabbed them by the tail. How did he do that? It is super, there is something supernatural that happens when the Holy Spirit anoints you. When the Holy Spirit endorses you. Because the one that is in charge of power is the Holy Spirit. This is what the Lord Jesus said this. He says, hey, you can insult the son. You can speak against the father. But anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit... You are in danger of damnation. That he doesn't forgive. Amen. No, the, the, it's very strange. He said, the father, you speak against the son, you can be forgiven. But anyone that blasphemes against the Holy Spirit, you're in danger of, blas uh, of, of damnation. So it means it is a part of God that is very sacred. That a lot of people think they have had encounters with the Holy Spirit, but they haven't. If they have, they have just been where he is. But they have never encountered him where he, he sits. I'm talking to the wrong Amen. people. There is a place. If you look in the gospels, you realize that the apostles got to a place whereby they will fast and pray. And the Holy Spirit will say, set apart so and so. Notice God did not say in the last days, everyone will receive my son. He said, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit. No one can even confess Jesus without the Holy Spirit. And no one has the Holy Spirit will blaspheme the work of God or blaspheme Jesus. That is why sometimes when men of God say they have, they have the Holy Spirit and they see a miracle, but they cannot tell that is God. You understand they are saved. But the Holy Spirit is questionable in their life. Amen. Because not anyone that takes the Bible and preaches, it means they are full of the Holy Ghost. In fact, the Lord Jesus said it like this. Let me prove to you that some people you think are full of the Holy Spirit and they are not. Jesus took his disciples and told them two by two, go preaching. Go and preach, bless whoever you bless. And he told them, you know how the, it goes. And when they came back, they said, Lord, even demons were subject unto us. Jesus said, oh, yeah, I saw Satan fall. <laughs> like lightning. Be glad your name is in the book of life. Jesus says it like this. Mark 16, 17 says, and this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. Yeah. To cast out demons doesn't mean you're full of the Holy Spirit. Anyone that believes Jesus can cast out a demon. I'm talking to the wrong people. So good. It is not what you're thinking. Casting out demons is the right of everyone that is in the kingdom. Yeah. The apostles were not even, they, did, they were not even baptized in the Holy Spirit. Demons were already obeying them because they are with Jesus. So some people think because they have done deliverance, I am full of that. That's foolish pride. They don't know spiritual things. Anyone that is with Christ, demons are already under your feet. So if the Holy Spirit comes into your life, you need more than just dealing with demons. Because we have been moved from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. So if I have the light of God, demons should not, darkness should not be able to be around. That's obvious. 
Now there are levels. Levels within deliverance that now it becomes by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why Jesus said, I cast out devils by the finger, not by the hand. It's like finger. Bah. That is when you grab the mic, you just say, hey, any evil spirit here come out and people start to manifest. That is a different, like when you look at Prophet T.B. Joshua, it was different. That was a different league. It was not legal right. Now we are going to use scripture. No, this was just like he speaks and something. He doesn't, you may have come from just a Harlot's house. You may have just come from Juju. You came to do witchcraft and he comes to you and say, okay. He, he delivers you by force and you receive Jesus. Amen. You don't even repent. You, you get delivered, then you repent. Amen. You say, I was a wizard. I was a witch. It's a dimension. Amen. So not everyone that say now repent, say, Lord Jesus, I give you my... Those you know, they are still operating in the jurisdiction of just receiving the Lord Jesus. You know, when we went to, when we were in Dallas, the first crusade I did, Papa, crazy move of God. When we went to Miami, crazy move of God. People are like, ah, this may be fake. They paid actors. All these people, there were, there, was a, there were women that were pregnant, trying to jump off the balcony, and the, our guys were so prepared that they grabbed them. There is a realm, listen to me. There is a place that when you enter into the anointing, the power of the Holy... Amen. It's a different dimension. I want you to understand this because when you understand this, your operation shifts. You begin to seek God differently. You see, the kingdom of God is full of mysteries. Said, seek me and you shall find me and I will show you things you do not know of. So there are things you will never know of until you find him. You will open your Bible, you won't see it. Uh, are you listening to me? Maybe you want me to do fire preaching. I wanted to teach you. To bring you somewhere. I always find it funny. When people go to a church and they say. I didn't feel the anointing there. It's your fault. No, no, no. Listen to me. Oh, I went there. You know, I just. I just said the presence of God was not there. You see, your mistake is you thought you go to the house. God does not live in a building. God lives in people. Amen. So if I go to a place, I am supposed to bring the presence. Amen. When Jesus went to the temple, he didn't go to the temple and say, you didn't worship well. The presence is not here. The presence of the Lord Jesus. The presence of the Lord Jesus. Healed the sick, delivered people, transformed people, converted, and he left. And where he left, they followed because they followed the presence. They did not follow the building. Amen. So if you're still in the realm that I, you know, I left that church because ah, there's just no presence. You are talking about yourself, not the building. You're not talking about the pastor. You're talking about yourself. If you're not clapping, you're the one I'm talking about. That is, why that, <laughs> that is why a lot of people, they like this kind of preaching. Uh, God, <laughs> and God, and they shout, yeah, they say, wow, there was power. Yet you left home not knowing anything. Amen. Empty. There was no encounter. There was no shift. Yeah. What is the language of the Holy Spirit? That is the question. What is the love language of the Holy Spirit? Ah. What is the love language of the Holy Spirit? That is the question. Because there is something that the Holy Spirit is attracted to. Because the one who is in charge of all that, it says not by strength or by might, but it is by my spirit. Jesus could not start the ministry without the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
No one has ever served God without the Holy Spirit. If you're called by God, you see, they can't understand why God has raised our family so much, why God has lifted me, why God has done these things. They think, ah, you know, it's because he has dreadlocks. Where did you see pastors with dreadlocks being received? Oh, you know, it's like, because you think people will be attracted by a clean cut. No. People want God. Amen. People want God. People are tired of people who look the part without the power. God people want power. Yeah. Somebody shout power. 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 People want power. People are tired of people that look the part. Uh, I am bishop. I am apostle. We are tired of it. We want results. Amen. Where Jesus was, there was results. Yes. We want results and God is giving you results. Giving you results yeah. in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. Now sit for two seconds. Sit, sit for two seconds. Sit for two seconds. Sit for two seconds. Uh. Oh. Oh. Sit for two seconds. Sit for two seconds. Those who are already sitting, you are wise. You are deep in spirit. Because what, what I am telling you, I promise you, if you are a man of God, you are a believer, you want to see God move. You, you, in a, where I come from, you say you put this in the back of your head. You will allow it to be in your subconscious. This is the difference maker. What is the language of the Holy Spirit? Notice there is the tongues of men. There is the tongues that we says he that speaketh in tongues speaks to God and not to man. And then the Bible also says even if I speak in the tongues of of angels so there is a language that even angels are attracted to so you can live a life that sets up an atmosphere where angels want to be around you that is why it says the angel of the lord encompass them that fear him so there is a atmosphere that you may be a christian but the angels don't want to be around you and there's people who love God and angels are around them. All these are dimensions. It is spiritual understanding because you have to remember, angels are not robots. They have feelings. Uh, you, you, uh, let me show you a good example. John, uh, the father of uh, John the Baptist is in the temple. He's a priest. In the temple, angel Gabriel appears bah, to Mary. Says, Mary, you are favored before all women. Mary says, ah, she receives him. Says, ah, how will I have this baby? I don't know any man. He says, don't worry. The Holy Spirit will overshadow you. When Gabriel came to Daniel, he was so gentle to Daniel. He said, Daniel, most esteemed servant of the Mosai God. He humbled himself and there's a way Gabriel dealt with him. But when he came to John's father, he came and said, John, your wife, is not, his name is not John. What is the guy's name again? He says, Zachariah, Uncle Zach, your wife shall have a child. You will call his name John. And gave all this, and Zachariah doubted. All of a sudden, the gentle angel Gabriel changed. He got into his feelings. It's in your Bible. He says, hey, you see in the world when, today when we were driving, let me, let me repent. We were driving. <laughs> we were with Papa. <laughs> so we are driving. Ah, this guy just cuts, comes before us. We almost died. I, I, and I told Papa, I pushed the brake to the maximum. The car did not stop. It kept going. And all of a sudden, the car was just stopped. 
and the guy moved. I know that it was Papa's angels that saved us before God. We were saved. Now, now this, is, this happened today in the morning before we came. I'm telling you before the Lord. And literally God rescued us like that. But I looked at that situation and I said, ah, this guy doesn't know me like that. Me, I'm a fighter. You want to kill us? I'll come out. My father is in the car. I will give you fivefold ministry. <laughs> Do you know the gift that is in the car? So I got in my feelings for a second. Papa said, relax. God has saved us. I said, yes, Papa. We came. Angel Gabriel got in his feelings. He looked and he said, hey, I am Gabriel. Notice, hey, hey, it's the first time you saw an angel saying, I am. He said, I am Gabriel who stands in the presence of God. He said, there are angels that are in heaven don't stand before God. Me, I see God. Yes. Do you know who you are doubting? I'm talking to the wrong people. Gabriel stood and said, I am Gabriel who stands in the presence of God. You doubt me because you doubted me. You will not speak until this baby is born. He punished not because the Holy Spirit said. Gabriel said, I came to give you a message. Do you know who I am for God to send me to give you a message? You think I go to everyone. I am not coming because of you. I am coming because of who you are carrying. I come to give you this special message. Yes. And you doubt me. Nah, I'm not, you, you need consequence. You will not speak. Notice an angel had the power to make somebody mute. Shut his mouth. Not because God said, and God never intervened. God said, yeah. Shut his mouth. So there are things you can do that can grieve angels around you. This is true. There are things you can do that angels are like, I don't like this guy. God has chosen him, but working with him is difficult. They go back to heaven and they report you. That's true. They report you. It's very true. They will report, they will say, this one, we can't work with him. So there is a language of angels also. That is not just in the tongues you speak, but it's the atmosphere you set up. There's a certain righteous lifestyle that you need to have to allow them to be able to be in your environment. Because if there's no fear of God, they don't want you. Because it can end up being your demise. Uh, Are you listening? Yes. I'm about to finish so that Papa can prophesy. So the question is, what is the language of the Holy Spirit? So in order for you to understand or know a language, you have to look at patterns. Anyone that cannot analyze patterns is somebody that is not serious about God. You see, one thing that Papa is very, anyone that Papa grooms, he always says, study, 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 study. If you don't study the word, if you're not in the word, if you don't study the word, your prophetic will be weak. If you don't practice your prophetic, you have to be somebody that studies. You have to be somebody that studies. If you're not somebody that studies, he will not like you. It's true. 100%. So if I am serious about the Lord, I have to be somebody that studies patterns. Because that's how you build a doctrine of your own. See, there are things that I do before God I will never tell you to do because that's mine. Because I notice how God worked with certain people and I saw God doing the same thing with me. So I adapted it and then I built on it. I'll give you an example. When I start service at home, I always start service on my knees. Because every time the 24 elders ministered unto God, they ministered on their knees. That became our uh, uh, culture. And it became our doctrine in church that we don't begin to serve God until we honor him on our knees. 
Does it mean you need to do that? No, but we do that. We know the results. I've not read anyone in the Bible in heaven standing before God just standing. They all bow before him. So if I'm about to serve God in the presence of people, I have to honor God to make sure that I have put God in his place before I do anything. Amen. That is for me. Not saying if you start preaching standing, it's bad. This is mine. Amen. So you have to analyze patterns. Some of you, you want patterns of praying eight hours a day. I don't know anyone that prays eight hours a day that prophesies like Papa. I haven't seen it. Godo godo baga bogo bogo baya ya 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 baya ka ka ya ede eya aya eya ede baya ede baya ede baya ede baya ede baya baya ede baya ede baya yo eight hours. I have never seen them get a revelation. then you people think that is power it's not that's human effort i'm not saying you shouldn't put effort every prayer point has the same tongue we are going to pray that there are breakthroughs break 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 we are going to bind every demon break break we ought to do this. Hey, yeah, hey, yeah. Same, same tongues. You understand that this is human effort. And then you see, you know, the way. <laughs> but maybe there was one person that actually it worked. It was their way of encountering God. Amen. Then people saw it, they adapted it, but they thought that they are praying, but they are coping. They are not praying. Are, are you following this? So, 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 capture this. I know I'm putting you in major suspense, but we are coming there. What is the pattern of the Holy Spirit? Because the only way I know, okay, how do I know Papa's going to like something I bought? Is because I've noticed his patterns. Papa likes loud things. If it is not loud, he will not be into it. It may be the most expensive thing, but if it is not having a statement, he won't care. If it has a statement, he will be attracted. That is what pulls him. Are, are, are you listening to me? So unless it is something, now Apostle is a good man. If you bring him something, you just, he can wait just to appease you. Papa will receive it and he will give it right in front of your eyes. <laughs> Sir, thank you. I think it will look good on you. <laughs> Is it not true? It's true. And he will receive it with love, but he will give it. Why? <laughs> That's just his nature. Not that he's insulting you. He receives it genuinely. But you will pass it on because it's not his thing. You see, most of us want to give God what is not his thing. So good. So good. I'm talking to the wrong people. Some of you want to give God what is not his thing. He will get it like this and pass it. Because he won't take it. It's not his. That is why when God wanted to save mankind, he gave himself a gift. He gave himself a sacrifice. He gave himself what he loves. He doesn't love anything more than Jesus. So he only receives Jesus. So he gave himself a gift. On our behalf. I see two seconds. Two seconds, I pray. I, I, so we are trying to give God what we like. What we think is cool. What we think is best. 
But we never go to God and understand what does this God really like? What does he really like? What does the Holy Spirit like? Hallelujah. What is the thing that will make the Holy Spirit mm, say you, I can't resist you? Yeah. I don't want to, but I have to. Yeah. So it means we have to look at patterns. I'm, I'm, because of time, I'm just going to paraphrase it for you. Papa, it's okay, I continue. Okay. Maybe you are ready to go home. No! Now, I want you to go to Acts chapter number 2, if you can. Are you, are you there? Yes. Acts chapter number what? Two. Okay. Can somebody read it for me? From one? Mm-hmm. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come. I want, you, I want you to mark these things. That's why I like physical Bible. So, or take notes. Make sure you take notes and note these things that are, you're about to hear. Okay, are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, read it, sir. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, uh -huh. they were all with one accord in one place. Stop right there. The number one language... Of the Holy Spirit is he likes unity. Amen. Amen. There cannot be unity without loyalty. Mm, that's good. There cannot be unity without loyalty. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit does not move on people that are not about the body. The Bible says no one has ever abused his left hand or the right foot when it's weak. But they nurture it because it's the body. That's good. That's good. The reason why we have the loudest voices today on the internet are the most powerless. And they are the biggest critics. They talk about everyone and about everything. But if you see them, they have never delivered somebody, led somebody to salvation. It is always ex-church people, people who are church hat that don't sit in any church that follow them. That agree with them because they also don't do anything. So they congregate together. But somebody who is divisive, where there is no unity. You see, like me, I'm bound to my father until glory. Why? Why? Because I know unity is where the flow of the power of God is. Amen. When Jesus was with them, they were not united. They were united around Jesus, but they were not united amongst themselves. Two apostles came with their mother. They said, Lord, when you enter your glory, let one of my sons sit in the left and the other on the right. Jesus said, you don't know what you're asking. And then the other disciples got angry. They said, you guys, this is what you're doing in the... It tells you they were not united. They were following after Jesus because he was a great leader. But among themselves, they were not united. If you are going to see revival, it begins by unity. Making Jesus the Lord the center. When you walk through these doors, don't walk just because you want a prophecy. You will get that's obvious. Not just because you get healing, that is obvious. Not just because you get breakthrough, that is obvious. But when you get those things, what are you going to do? Are you going to be united with where you are blessed? When you are blessed, are you going to go and fuel the engine that saved you so that you can save more souls? And bring them to Jesus? Or are you going to live and go and give a testimony somewhere else? I have ministered. God has given me grace to minister to athletes and people in film and all these things. Great people that God has chosen. The greatest ones are the most humble. The ones that God just used me to just raise them up, they are the most humble. They stay. They know where God blessed them. And they fuel us to get more people to Christ. Amen. But the ones that were just after their stomach, how many do we know? 
I said, ah, prophet, if you can. I say, I'm going to pray for you. Yeah. When God blesses you, don't forget God and don't forget where you are. Yeah. Come and praise God so that others can be encouraged. Yeah. I will lay hands. Pa, two weeks, big TV show, a little bit, millions. You don't see them anymore. Yeah. Disapp when they see you, they used to say, hey, Papa prophet, they say, hey, bro, oh, God is good. You will never see me again. God will take grace. God will take it. A hundred percent. God will. Because you have no honor for God. You have no honor for God. Why would God sustain where there is lack of honor? God doesn't. God is an honorable God. Is a loyal God. He loves certain character. So a few. Ah, you see them. Some now when I look and I look spiritually and I see their heart, I just uh, don't let him come close to me. I'll just say hi from far. Their heart is not right. Because the problem is when God blesses you, he can't reverse it. So we who have been sent by God to be a blessing to you, we have to make sure we get your heart right before we bless you. Amen. Because if we bless you, without you being right with God, you end up being a prodigal son. You may even lose your soul because of the blessing. A hundred percent. I've seen people who had nothing, God touched, bam, before you know it, huh? Did, uh, why did, I haven't seen you in church for a long time. Well, my Bentley, you know, it was being serviced. You used to take a bus to come to church. Come on. Now you are not worthy to even enter an Uber. Come on. To go to church, to worship God. Right. You are too big now that unless... Okay. You see it in a little bit, they start drying up. Ba, 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 ba. Before you know it, they are just auditioning, nothing is happening. Because God is a God of honor. Amen. The first language of the Holy Spirit is be somebody that is in love. We're seeing souls coming to Jesus because that is the mission of the Holy Spirit. To convict people of their sin to come to Christ. So if you are involved in anything that brings souls to Jesus, the Holy Spirit will love you. He will favor you. Are you listening? Yes. It becomes important to God. Now you become an asset to the kingdom. Yes. Amen. If we need to go and do a crusade, are you going to clean chairs? Mm. Are you going to be able, if you can't clean chairs, can you support the mission? Are you going to, when you become somebody that is consumed, Lord, you are blessing me. What can I do in your house? Yes. That is unity to the Holy Spirit. Yes. When you see your brother and sister naked, you cover them and then you pray for them. You see, we have so many people that want to talk publicly about people. Yes, yes. Yet, us who can really see, if we want to talk about you, yeah. <laughs> it will be done, will be finished. Yeah. But we don't do it, we pray for people. If, I see, if you see somebody going the wrong way, gather people, pray for them. Mm -hmm. Amen. If you are not going to pray for them, because imagine somebody who has a weakness. You see, weakness is not wickedness. Amen. That's good. That's good. Let me repeat that. Weakness is not wickedness. Amen. Wickedness is when you are after doing wrong. Yeah. Weakness is something that you cannot control. Yeah. Weakness is not wickedness. Mm -hmm. So if somebody has a weakness, you are supposed to pray for them. Yeah. Encourage them in God. Position them in God. Calling them out will make them hide the sin from you. They will be dying because they know if I do this, I will be rejected. Yeah. The Holy Spirit is the one that changes people. I can't change you. Amen. Papa can't change you. Amen. We can preach to you and the word is what will change you. Amen. Rebuking you won't change you. Does God come and rebuke you? He doesn't do that. He allows the work of the Holy Spirit to go through. You will be convicted. He will use somebody to speak to you. But we are trying to do God's job. Unity attracts the Holy Spirit. Unity. 
when the day of Pentecost was fully come, meaning that day was not coming because they were not united. Mm. The day they were united, the day came. So your Pentecost day is waiting for you to align with the Holy Spirit. Wow. Amen. Then you will be baptized in him like you have never seen before. Amen. It won't just be tongues. But it will be another dimension completely. Amen. Number two, read, keep reading. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven uh -huh. as of a rushing mighty wind. Uh -huh. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. One more time. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. Notice as that there was a sound from heaven. And the place it was like wind was blowing. Have you ever been where wind is? <laughs> not, not a breeze. Breezes. Are you listening? Yeah. If you go on where Peter and John go to the temple, they get beat up. They pray. The Bible says, and the room that they were in was shaken and there was a loud noise. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Are you catching this? Yeah. What is this sound? Then all of a sudden you see the same sound enters the people. The people say, these guys are drunk. Why are they making noise? What does the Holy Spirit respond to? <laughs> I've given you the answer, but maybe you're not seeing it. Psalms 100. From verse 1. Are you ready? Yes. Make a what? Joyful noise. <laughs> Wait, 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 You see, noise is the sound of life. If you go to the cemetery, it's the quietest place. God is the God of the living. When a baby is born, noise. Then you say, oh, so cute. If your baby doesn't cry, it's a problem. Something is wrong. I, I, are you listening to what I'm saying? Elijah goes to pray. Runs away from Jezebel. The Bible says it like this. There was an earthquake. God was not in it. There was a mighty wind. God was not in it. There was a fire. God was not in it. Notice before the Holy Spirit comes, there's always noise. Mm. Wow. the Holy Spirit was hovering over the water until the father spoke wow. <laughs> mm. the expression of a man's spirit is in their voice Amen. the expression of a man's character is in their soul The expression of a man's spirit is in their voice. The expression of a man's character is in their soul. That is why the Bible says, do not quench the spirit in you. When you are not loose, you quench the spirit in you. You see, people who do deep prophecy... Like our father. He, he can't prophesy where it's quiet. Because the Holy Spirit likes noise. Yeah. When you make noise. The Holy Spirit is like they are speaking my language. Amen. Ooh. Hallelujah. Ooh. Sit. We are coming. Sit. Sit. Pro. There has to be shouts of joy. Because where there is joy, where there is noise, joyful noise, it is the atmosphere of heaven, so it attracts him. This is why Paul and Silas were in prison. God didn't deliver them. 
The moment they were in prison, they were chained in the midnight. They began, praise the Lord. Yeah. All of a sudden, the place was shaken. Oh. The Holy Spirit only moves where there is noise. If a place is quiet, the Holy Spirit doesn't like it. It's like this is a dead place. This is not a place for me. Don't confuse the presence of God and the Holy Spirit. It's not the same thing. The Holy Spirit can be in a person, but you don't feel the presence, but you will see the power of God. The presence of God is when God has decided to make himself known among everyone that is there. Amen. The presence is different. God tells the children of Israel, you're going to take Jericho. Ah, they are doubting. God said, no, I just need you to praise, make noise. When the trumpet will sound, shout. And the wall went down. Why? Not because they were like, fire, break, break. Ego do God. <laughs> do, do, do. <laughs> Why are you good at these things? Are you capturing this? Yeah. It means that you have to become crazy for God. Wait, wait, wait. Hallelujah. That is why I said you shall love your God with what? All, all your strength, all your might, all everything in you needs to love God. You see, David was powerful because when David praised God, he forgot that he has clothes. I'm not telling you to strip. David would take off everything because he's so carried away. That is why the spirit of God was with him. He was not just anointed. The spirit of God was in the, with him. Amen. God was with him. Yeah. No one ever came before David and said, Oh, I feel the presence. No. <laughs> but the spirit of God was in him. Most of us are deeper than those people. Yeah. It's true. The grace we walk in is better. Yeah. The Bible tells you that. Yeah. This is true. So what is keeping you from a greater realm is you have forgotten how to praise God. And to praise God is not organized. Let me explain to you. You see, praise is not praise when you sing in unison. It is not. Because when somebody begins to praise God in the spirit... There is a discord that happens and that is what we call noise. Wow. Noise is not something pleasing. It is something disruptive. Yeah. Noise is disrupting. Yeah. Noise is disrupting. So if we are all genuinely worshipping and calling on the name of Jesus and I actually enter the spirit and you enter the spirit we will not be in unison because when we are praying we may be hey 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 I'll go somewhere else you you may be hey go do go do something will happen that is like confusion that if somebody passes will say hey what, what, what just happened what's going on these people they are crazy but that is what confuses not only confuses but disrupts notice this the bible says this it says the enemies will come in what one one way but when god gets up they will scatter in seven different directions notice where god is it's disruptive You think where God is makes you uh, calm. No, it is disruptive. Jesus is going into Jerusalem. People are putting down. They said, tell them to stop this. Jesus said, if they will not make noise, the rocks will. 
Amen. So if Jesus is to walk in this house right now, many of you think we'll be like this. <laughs> hey, hey. So hear me. If you want to unlock the move of the Holy Spirit, learn to become loose in your praise to God. Amen. Stop cute praises. They don't move God. It's cool. That's for men. It's for humans. But to move God. Oh, you have to deal differently. When you become disruptive in your praise. Demons leave you by fire by force. Amen. When you become disruptive. In your joyful noise, the walls that have been limiting you, they naturally fall. Amen. Cancer will disappear. Sickness will depart from you. Poverty will depart from you. Amen. You will enter into the fire of the... Amen. Somebody lift your voice. Lift your voice and clap those hands. Oh, yes. Lift your voice and clap those hands. Listen to me. Hear me. Before we hit prophecy, before Papa hits you with prophetic, we need out. <laughs> before Papa hits you with prophetic, I'm banned to prophesy tonight. I'm not allowed. Uh, no. <laughs> Maybe I'll be a baking vocalist no, in no. your prophecies. No. But I'm not prophesying. <laughs> no. Before <laughs> when God created Adam, he rested. <laughs> Thank God there is not just Adam. <laughs> there is innocent. <laughs> There is the ego that has never landed. <laughs> there is Andrew. There is Mama T. <laughs> but, but capture this. Capture this. I am going to give you a chance to clap your hands wildly. Wait, 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 wait. And you are just going to praise God. We are going to shift the atmosphere whereby you, you may not even need prophecy. You yourself, you prophesy. The Bible says it like this. When Saul met the company of prophets making noise, worshipping God, something entered him and he began to prophesy. Everybody looked at him and said, is this the same guy? The move of God in the atmosphere is supposed to make your neighbor say, I have never had those tongues. I have never seen glory like that on you. I have never seen power like that moving through you. Are you sure you're here? I'm going to give you three minutes. Lift your voice and give God the wildest praise. Lift your voice and begin to praise him. <laughs> Lift your voice and begin yeah. to praise him. Yeah, 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 Oh, Shepa. 
Rendelege de Bressouja. Yipa pa 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 shata. Lift your voice, lift your voice. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Praise him, praise him. Shela pa ya to sika pa haya da. Clap those hands, clap those hands, clap those hands. Yipa pa 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 pa. Clap those hands, clap those hands. Clap your hands, clap your hands, clap your hands. 